Well, the people want to see him pitch. He's a very unique pitcher. He's a very good pitcher. Whatever the ticket costs, they're willing to pay for it. They're totally into normal mania there. And he's caused quite a bit of excitement. He was known for his signature windup, known as the Tornado, slowly raising his arms high above his head, lifting his front leg, and twisting his torso until his back faced home plate. Finally, he hurtled toward the plate with an explosive delivery that featured the same arm speed for all of his pitches. Yes, that puts it into a nutshell the mesmerizing pitching ability of Hideo Nomo. In this video, we will look at 8 reasons why Hideo Nomo was actually so good. Number 8. Superstar in Japan Hideo Nomo was born on August 31st 1968 in Minato-ku, Osaka, Japan. Nomo's family was considered working class with a father who was a fisherman and a postal worker, and a mother who was a part-time supermarket employee. As a youth, Nomo was shy and withdrawn, although passionate about baseball. He developed his corkscrew style of pitching motion to impress his father while playing catch. Nomo believed that rotating from having his back turned to his target would help him add speed to his pitches. After graduating from Seho Industrial High School in Osaka, Nomo was actually not selected in the upon professional baseball draft due to issues with his control. He had to do things the hard way by joining the Shin Netetsu Sakai, an industrial league team representing Nippon Steels in Osaka. Nomo got better and better in the industrial league, so much so that he made the 1988 Summer Olympics. Nomo contributed to the team winning and opened the eyes of scouts with the Kanetsu Buffaloes drafting him in 1989. Nomo debuted with them in 1990 and was an immediate success, going 18-8, and eight. but more impressive striking out 287 hitters in just 235 innings. The strikeout numbers were attributed to his unorthodox windup. Nomo won the pitching triple crown that year. In his first four seasons, Nomo was as consistent and consistently good as any pitcher in Japanese baseball, winning 17 or 18 games each year. Yes, Nomo was stellar in his homeland. Number 7. Breathtaking Rookie Season After the 1994 season, Nomo got into a contract dispute with team management. The Buffalo Buffalo's rebuffed Nomo's demands to have a contract agent and multi-year contract. Nomo's agent, Don Nomura, found a loophole in the Japanese uniform player's contract to enable him to become a free agent. The voluntary retirement clause allowed a player who retired to play for whomever he wished after returning to active status. This led to him heading to the U.S., where in February 1995, the Los Angeles Dodgers signed him. On May 2nd, 1995, Nomo made his big league debut, becoming the first Japanese-born major leaguer to appear in a major league game since Masanori Murakami in 1965. The tornado delivery that baffled batters in Japan had the same effect on major league hitters, and he also started that year's all-star game striking out three of the six batters he faced. He topped out at 93 miles per hour in that game. Nomo was named NL Rookie of the Year honors that year over future MVP Chipper Jones. Nomo started off with a bang. Strike three call. He came back and struck him out. Take a look at just how far he torques. That knee really drops down and gets right parallel to the ground. This is the type of drop and drive you'd normally see from a pitcher, a power pitcher. Number six, strikeout machine. 13 strikeouts, 50 strikeouts. That is the top four game performance in the history of the Dodgers. Hideo Nomo was a strikeout machine at his best. Nomo led the league in strikeouts in 1995 while finishing second in walks and was second with a 2.54 ERA. In 28 starts, Nomo had four complete games with three shutouts. In 191 innings, he struck out a league-leading 236 batters. He struck out 11.101 batters per nine innings to break Sandy Koufax's single-season franchise record of 10.546 in 1962. In 1996, he went 16-11 and had a 3.19 ERA. He struck out 234, although his rate came down by nearly two strikeouts as he was averaging only 9.1 strikeouts per nine innings. Nomo struck out a career-high 17 on April 13th against the Marlins. He went all nine innings, allowing only one run on three hits. Nomo joined Sandy Koufax, Dazzy Vance, and Ramon Martinez as the only pitchers in Dodgers history to have at least 17 strikeouts in a single game. Koufax and Martinez both struck out 18 in a game, the strikeout numbers just went up for Nomo in 1999.
197 as he struck out 233 and was averaging more than 10 per 9 innings. In 2001, Nomo led the American League in strikeouts with 220. Yes, Nomo made big hitters look silly with strikeout after strikeout. Number 5. Nomo Mania and Endorsements 1995 was a dark year for Major League Baseball because the labor strike delayed the start of the season and caused waning popularity. Hideo Nomo was a breath of fresh air that the sport needed. Then Commissioner Bud Selig put it best in stating, Nomo might have been the best thing that happened to baseball this year. Baseball needs good human interest stories and the number one story in baseball has been Nomo. Considering what baseball has gone through with the strike and all of our labor problems, the timing couldn't have been better. His fellow Dodger teammate Todd Worrell stated, Baseball needs Nomo. He's brought excitement back into the game and certainly to Los Angeles. He's helping restore a lot of the luster this game has lost. We should take advantage of it. Yes, Nomo revitalized the sport when it needed a face. Japanese media and fans appeared in large numbers in games that he started. Nomo's games were regularly broadcast live to Japan despite the fact most people would be waking up when he started games. Nomo could not go out in public without everyone wanting his autograph. Nomo's agent admitted, Now I've got my phone ringing off the hook with endorsements, advertisers, people wanting to do movies, write books, everything. Well, you have so many American players that go over to Japan, but not, you know, you don't often see them come over here. And when one comes over and does really well, you know, everyone's proud of him. Nomo had a signature sneaker called the Air Max Nomo produced by Nike in 1996. Also, he appeared on a Sagata Sanshiro commercial for the Sega Saturn in 1997. Yes, Nomo Mania was a real thing and a fever that swept the baseball world like no other leading to mega endorsements. Number 4. Funny Stories Nomo and Nomo Mania has some legendary stories. During his time in the Industrial League, Nomo slept with a tennis ball tape between his fingers to perfect his fork ball grip. Talk about dedication. The Dodgers went all out for Nomo Mania. The Dodgers gift shop had $150 Nomo Dodger jackets, $25 Nomo t-shirts, $10 Nomo baseballs, $50 Nomo sweatshirts, $5 Nomo pennants, and $3 Nomo pins. Yes, they were not joking around. Dodger broadcaster Vin Scully frequently used Japanese phrases during Nomo starts. 1956, uh, Dodgers went to Japan, and I got a little teeny booklet, and it was phonetics. English, Japanese, Japanese, English. And uh, the first thing I learned was uh, Scotch Mizu Taksan Kori, Dozo. And what that means is Scotch and water and a lot of ice. <laughs> that, that, that was my beginning of my Japanese. During one recent game, he scurried from his broadcast booth to pin down a Japanese journalist. He was counting Nomo strikeouts in Japanese, but he could only count as high as six. Roko in Japanese, when he realized that Nomo would strike out one more than that, he scribbled Saichi Hachi Kuju on a notepad after the quick lesson. 7, 8, 9, 10. Unfortunately, a few innings later, when Nomo struck out his 11th batter, Scully panicked. That strikeout number, oh, I don't know how to say 11. Let's just call it Ju plus one. Man, that was pretty funny. And Nomo and Scully are just baseball legends. A magnificent performance for Hideo Nomo. Number three, no hitters and capable hitter. On September 17th, 1996, Nomo did the impossible and threw a no hitter at Coors Field. To this date, it is still the only no hitter in the history of the stadium, and it likely will stay that way for a long time due to the altitude in Denver. In addition to allowing no hits, Nomo also struck out eight. Dodgers manager Bill Russell was stunned by Nomo's achievement. He said that was huge, especially to do it in Colorado, with the hitters they have over there and for Nomo to throw a no-hitter is a tremendous effort. More than 20 years later, some argue that Nomo's feat, particularly against one of the best hitting teams of all time, was the greatest regular season pitching performance in baseball history. Simply remarkable. In his first start with the Red Sox on April 4th, 2001, Nomo pitched the second no-hitter of his career, defeating the Baltimore Orioles. Orioles, 3-0 in Camden Yards. He joined Cy Young, Jim Bunning, and Nolan Ryan as the only Major League pitchers to throw a no-hitter in both the American and National Leagues. Randy Johnson did join the group with his perfect game in 2004. Most pitchers struggled to get hits in the National League. Nomo was even a serviceable batter in his National League days, cracking four home runs throughout his career. Nomo was not an automatic out and could do damage as a hitter. Number
number two, accomplishments and pop culture. Nomo earned 123 wins in the major leagues and 78 in Japan, winning his 200th overall game on June 15, 2005. He won the 1996 ESPY Award for Breakthrough Athlete, and Nomo was elected to the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame in 2014, only the third ever to be selected in their first year of eligibility. At the time, he was also the youngest player ever elected to that Hall of Fame, although his record was broken in 2018 by Hideki Matsui. Yes, a fitting reward. Nomo Mania was so big that it got the acknowledgement of pop culture. There was even a song about Nomo called There's No One Like Nomo, performed by Jack Sheldon, written by Marvin Hamlish and Alan and Marilyn Bergman, and was released by GNP Crescendo Records in 1996. Nomo was also referenced in hip-hop lyrics by rappers such as Pusha T and Whale. The man was a big deal. Number 1. Legacy for Future Japanese Players Nomo was Japan's first MLB superstar. As Dave Wallace, Nomo's pitching coach with the Dodgers put it, he was the first one. He had everything to lose and nothing to gain. He set the table for a lot of other guys who are now reaping the benefits. Nomo was more popular than our Prime Minister Muriyama. Because of Nomo, Major League teams sent scouts to Japan looking for the next Nomo. The Japanese Professional Baseball League also was validated for its belief that its play is close to the Major League level, the proof being Nomo's success. Since then, MLB and NPB have worked to make sure there are no other defectors through a posting system and the local franchise benefits from the sale of the player. Nomo left a legacy and paved the way for Ichiro, Matsui, and Otani. Yes, all of the above made him that good. So do you think Hideo Nomo is Japan's best MLB pitcher? What is your fondest memory of him? Let me know in the comments section, smash that like button, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Until next time.